Hello. Here I am again. I hope you're glad to see me. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about uh, matching the sample and stimulus equivalents. Now, unless you already know a little bit about this, this probably sounds like a terribly nerdy topic that is of little relevance to the real world. And uh, that's kind of how all this started. Uh, so, uh, but uh, as I will show you, uh, there's tremendous relevance to the real world. Uh, so let's begin with a quick review of the matching to sample procedure. Uh, the first slide uh, uh, provides an uh, uh, outline of what this might look like in a pigeon experiment. And a lot of these experiments were originally done with pigeons, although now we're doing them with lots of human subjects. So uh, uh, there are three positions in the, uh, uh, along the wall of the pigeon. Uh, the middle position comes on white, and that tells the pigeon, you know, trial's about to start, pay attention, and then the sample stimulus uh, is projected uh, in the middle. In this example, it's a uh, 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 set of horizontal lines. And then we have a delay followed by the choice alternatives, uh, one of which is the uh, horizontal lines, and the other is vertical, and if you pick the uh, matching, stimulus, uh, you win the jackpot and you, you get access to food. That's the jackpot. All right. Uh, and uh, this is pretty easy to learn and uh, no problem. Now, let's go to the next slide, which illustrates a variation on this, which is called symbolic matching uh, to sample. Same kind of setup. Uh, we uh, cue the beginning of the trial. Then we present the sample stimulus. But now, uh, after the delay, there are two stimuli, two choice, uh, uh, choice alternatives, and neither of them matches the sample. So in this kind of a uh, task, uh, the relationship between the sample and the correct uh, choice stimulus is arbitrary or symbolic, and we could set it up so that if the sample is set of horizontal lines, then the correct choice is the triangle. And if the sample is vertical lines, then the correct choice is the square. So uh, there's an arbitrary relationship between the sample and what is the correct choice. And when I first uh, learned about symbolic matching to sample, I thought, man, you know, this seems kind of hard to figure out. And uh, this is probably pretty hard to learn. It turns out it's not really difficult to learn at all. In fact, uh, um, symbolic matching is learned about as fast as identity matching. So why should we concern ourselves with symbolic matching to sample? Uh, turns out symbolic, symbolic matching to sample is the basis of the establishment of a vocabulary. It's the basis for learning vocabulary, learning the meaning of words. And the next slide kind of illustrates this. So uh, here, let's say that uh, you're uh, trying to learn the uh, hack. Where should I hold this so you can see it pretty clearly? As you can see, this is an apple, right? So uh, let's say that you can uh, you need to learn the word apple. Well, you're shown a real apple, and then what are the choice alternatives? Well, one uh, one of the choices may be the drawing of an apple, or, and the other may be the drawing of a banana. Now, what's the correct choice? Well, it's the drawing of an apple. Now, you might think that that's not a symbolic relationship because I've got an apple here and then there's a drawing out of an apple. But in fact, a real apple is physically entirely different than the drawing of an apple. A real apple has, uh, uh, you know, uh, three dimensions to it. Uh, it has color of a particular sort. It has imperfections. It has certain hardness to it. It has a certain feel in the hand and all that. The drawing of an apple has none of those things. <laughs> drawing of an apple is two-dimensional. 
It's uh, if it, we can recognize the drawing as an apple, even if it's a cartoon line drawing with no color at all, and so on. So the correct choice is physically very different from the sample stimulus. Nevertheless, if you learn the word up, apple, you, you learn that symbolic relationship. Uh, we also learn a symbolic relationship between a real apple and the word apple as it's written down. So in that uh, case, we would uh, have the real apple as the sample stimulus. And then the word written down, apple versus banana, as the choice alternatives. Now, the word apple written down bears absolutely no relationship to the physical object, right? It does, it's not the same shape, and color, texture, nothing about the word made up of those letters is anything like an apple. Uh, nevertheless, uh, kids learn to uh, read the word apple based on having seen an apple. Uh, and that's entirely a symbolic uh, matching to sample kind of tasks. So the learning of vocabulary is full of these kinds of symbolic relationships. And <clears throat> what we learn as we're trying to master vocabulary is we learn that all these very variations on uh, different versions of the apple are all equivalent. And that's illustrated in the next slide. And this introduces the concept of stimulus equivalence. Physically distinct stimuli are treated as functionally the same. A real apple is, we learn, is equivalent to the sound of the word apple, uh, my saying the, the word apple uh, has no physical resemblance to a real apple. Sound is not the same as an object, a visual thing. It is not the same of the, as the written word. You know, auditory cues are very different in structure. They go through different sense modalities and all that. Then visual cues, of course, it's different from a drawing of an apple, the photograph of an apple, even a photograph of an apple is physically very different from a real apple. It's two-dimensional. Real apple is three-dimensional. I can, I can bite into an apple. I can't bite into a photograph. But all of these become equivalent as we learn the word apple. So stimulus equivalence is uh, uh, really at the heart of uh, learning vocabulary. And stimulus equivalent, as it turns out, is established using symbolic matching training. Uh, this uh, relationship between symbolic matching the sample and stimulus equivalence was uh, introduced and, and uh, extensively explored by Murray Sidman and his collaborators. You may recall uh, the name Sidman uh, we encountered Murray Sidman in talking about free operant avoidance. And uh, at, at that time, I pointed out that Sidman was really a sweet guy, and he really wasn't very comfortable about uh, studying aversive control of uh, experiments involving uh, brief shocks. And uh, so he went, out to, he went out to study other things, and he landed on this uh, symbolic matching as a way to train stimulus equivalence and as a way to train vocabulary uh, for, with individuals uh, that uh, have developmental disabilities and, and therefore very slow to learn vocabulary. But the basic elements of vocabulary training using symbolic matching are a part of how all kids learn vocabulary. Now, the next slide shows you three criteria for the establishment of stimulus equivalence that uh, Murray Sidman identified, and these are mathematical characteristics of equivalence. Uh, we don't have to go into the reasons why, but imagine training a symbolic matching task in which A, stimulus A, is the sample stimulus, and the correct choice is stimulus B. If you train A uh, is related to B as the correct choice, 
uh, that results in uh, some equivalence between A and B, such that if you now present A as a sample stimulus and present A as one of the choice alternatives, the subject will pick A. And that's the uh, property of reflexivity. The property of symmetry, which also is a characteristic of a stimulus equivalence class, is that if we train A as the correct choice, uh, I mean, A as the sample and the associated correct choice is B, if we test them in the reverse order, so we present B as the sample and then give the subject a choice that includes A, uh, the subject will select A as the correct choice. So having trained uh, the A to B relationship, the subject also performs accurately on the reverse of that, that is the B to A relationship, and that's the property of symmetry. And uh, finally, uh, finally uh, stimulus equivalence class is also has this property of transitivity. Now this requires training two symbolic matching tasks, A associated with B as the correct choice, and you also train B to be associated with C as the correct choice. So you train A to B and B to C, and now you test the subject with A as the sample, and you give them a choice that includes C, and the subject will select C, uh, and that's the transitivity relationship. That is, if A is associated with B and B is associated with C, then A becomes associated with C. And what's interesting about these uh, uh, te uh, test performances is you don't have to specifically train them. That is, you don't have to train the reflexivity relation. That emerges as a consequence of uh, training A to B relations. Uh, you don't have to train the symmetry relation. You train A to B, and they perform accurately on B to A. And similarly, in the transitivity, we train A to B, we train B to C, and the subject performs accurately on A to C. So these uh, uh, test uh, performances are are evidence that the subject has learned emergent relations. So an emergent relation is a relation that is acquired without explicit training in a symbolic matching task. So uh, you know, in order to illustrate uh, the power of uh, symbolic matching training in generating emergent relations, let's consider this uh, experiment here in which we train two different symbolic matching tasks. In one, A is the sample and B is the correct choice. In a, another one, B is the sample and C is the correct choice. And, and we train both of these symbolic relations until the subject's performance is, uh, uh, is total, uh, accurate on all trials. And, and then if, uh, this kind of training has established the stimuli A, B, and C as members of an equivalence class, then the subject should perform accurately on a whole slew of various test uh, uh, trials that he's never seen during the training episode. For example, the subject should perform uh, at high accuracy if B is presented as, as a sample and A is the is the correct choice stimulus. You should perform accurately if C is the sample and B is the correct choice stimulus. Those two are illustrations of the symmetry relation. And finally, you should perform accurately on A as the sample and C as the correct choice stimulus. That's the transitivity relation. And then uh, the next uh, few of these relations are illustrations of the reflexivity relation. If A is the sample, the subject should pick A as the correct choice. B is the sample, the subject should pick B as the correct choice, and so on. 
And then you could also present C as the sample and where A would be uh, the correct choice. And that's kind of a, a symmetrical version of the trans, uh, transitivity relation. So what's uh, really uh, impressive about all of this, uh, the reason that uh, uh, folks are very excited about this is that uh, I, the subject is able to perform a whole slew of, of uh, uh, tasks that the subject wasn't specifically trained to do. These emergent relations are you know, marvelously uh, uh, fabulous instances of performance that weren't specifically trained. So uh, this stimulus equivalence uh, training strategy and symbolic matching training strategy introduces a, a, a great deal of, of, of uh, 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 efficiency, great deal of efficiency in uh, training of stimulus equivalence relations. And uh, it uh, once we break it up like this, uh, it uh, shows us uh, how to put together training procedures to teach vocabulary. Now, uh, a lot of uh, the ways in which uh, elementary school kids learn vocabulary and learn to read has uh, all sorts of uh, similarities to this uh, symbolic matching task, but uh, breaking it down into these uh, specific steps has also turned out to be uh, tremendously useful in developing language training programs for people with developmental def uh, deficiencies uh, and disorders. So uh, people in applied behavioral analysis uh, are extremely excited about this. Uh, we should all be extremely excited about this. And uh, there's a lot of uh, research these days on the stimulus equivalence using symbolic matching. And now it's time to actually take a bite of the apple. <laughs> Thanks very much, folks.